Aesop Fables, Volume Four. The Peacock and the Crane. A peacock, spreading its gorgeous tail, mocked a crane that passed by. The strutting peacock ridiculed the ashen hue of the crane's plumage by saying, "I am robed like a king in gold and purple and all the colors of the rainbow, while you have not a bit of color on your wings." But the peacock's bragging did not bother the crane, for she could do something the peacock could not do. True, replied the crane, but I can soar high in the sky, while you can only walk around on the ground like a rooster in a barnyard. <laughs> Moral: Fine feathers do not make fine birds. The grasshopper and the owl. An owl, accustomed to feeding at night and sleeping during the day, was greatly disturbed by the noise of a grasshopper and asked him to stop chirping. The grasshopper refused to stop. In fact, the more the owl complained, the louder the grasshopper chirped, as if to taunt the owl. When the owl saw that his complaints would not get the grasshopper to stop chirping, he decided to try a different approach. The owl cordially said to the grasshopper, "Since I cannot sleep on account of your beautiful singing, I shall indulge myself in drinking some delicious nectar. Please come and join me, and we will drink it together." The grasshopper, who was thirsty and also pleased with the praise of his singing, Eagerly flew up to the owl's tree hollow, but the sly owl quickly pounced on the grasshopper and gobbled him all up. Moral: Flattery is not a proof of true admiration. The tortoise and the ducks. A tortoise, becoming tired of her humble home. Resolved to visit foreign lands, but she did not know which way to go. She asked two ducks to show her the road, and they told her that the best way to travel was through the air. <laughs> On her imploring their help, the ducks had her grasp a stick with her mouth, and they bore her aloft. As the ducks and the tortoise flew along, the gaping people below shouted at sight of the spectacle. The vain tortoise mistook their shouts for applause. I am surely a queen," she said. But alas, as she opened her mouth to speak, she lost her hold on the stick and fell to the ground, smashing her shell on the rocks. <coughs> Moral: Foolish curiosity and vanity often lead to misfortune. The heron. A heron was walking sedately along the bank of a stream. His eyes on the clear water, and his long neck and pointed bill ready to snap up a likely morsel for his breakfast. The clear water swarmed with fish, but Master Heron was hard to please that morning. No small fry for me, he said. Such scanty fare is not fit for a heron. Now a fine young perch swam near. No, indeed, said the heron. I wouldn't even trouble to open my beak for anything like that. As the sun rose, the fish left the shallow water near the shore and swam below into the cool depths toward the middle. The heron saw no more fish, and very glad was he at last to breakfast on a tiny snail. Moral: Do not be too hard to suit, or you may have to be content with the worst or with nothing at all. The farmer and his sons. A rich old farmer who felt that he had not many more days to live called his sons to his bedside. My sons, he said, do not on any account part with the estate that has belonged to our family for so many generations. Somewhere on it is hidden a rich treasure. I do not know the exact spot, but it is there, and you will surely find it. Spare no energy and leave no spot unturned in your search. 
As soon as the father died, the sons set to work digging with all their might, turning up every foot of ground with their spades, and going over the whole farm two or three times. No hidden gold did they find, but at harvest time when they had settled their accounts and had pocketed a rich profit far greater than that of any of their neighbors, they understood that the treasure their father had told them about was the wealth of a bountiful crop, and that in their industry had they found the treasure. Moral Industry is itself a treasure. The Wolf and the Crane A wolf, having a bone stuck in his throat, offered a crane a large sum of money to put her head into his throat and draw out the bone. When the crane had extracted the bone and demanded the promised payment, the wolf grinned slyly and exclaimed, Why, you have surely already been paid sufficiently. I permitted you to draw out your head in safety from my mouth and jaws. Is that not payment enough? Moral In serving the wicked, expect no reward and be thankful if you escape injury for your pains.